The thing that was different about pediatrics is here we had in the adult side the activism. And here is a community, uh, many of whom were well known, who uh, basically had access to the media. They could demonstrate. They could say, you know, we want to know what the cause is. Once the cause was found, we want to know the drugs. But when you're dealing with children, you're dealing with young parents, and the children obviously can't be activists. So we had a struggle in terms of getting funding for the research in children. Uh, we had to struggle in terms of drug development, but uh, where we got help there was from the, from the activist community. I remember one FDA meeting, uh, Dr. Kessler was head of the FDA then, and uh, they were appro approving a new protease inhibitor, ritonavir. And they weren't going to approve it for children because they hadn't done the studies in children. So the children who were infected were not going to get the drug. If it's not approved for use in children, they don't get the drug. And ACT UP New York and ACT UP San Francisco, they were in the back of the room and chanting, give the children the drug, give the children the drug. So well, we tried to work closely with, uh, with the activist community and say, don't forget the children, don't forget the women. They need treatment as, as well. So I would say from about 1981, when we found the first children with AIDS, until uh, 1994, it's a big, big length of time, but it, we were dealing primarily with defining the disorder, trying to find a way to stop the transmission from mother to child. 1994, the big study came out, uh, 076, which was a placebo-controlled trial, controversial at that time, using placebo in infants. But that was where mothers were given AZT, and then the babies were given AZT after birth, and it was stopped. I still remember it in February of 1994. It was an extraordinary result. Um, but a 60% reduction in HIV transmission to the babies. And that was the first time ever that a drug was able to stop transmission of the virus. So it, it was a profound discovery. And I think would have gotten more worldwide attention if it hadn't been in infants and children because that was always considered uh, a lesser part of the, the epidemic. But for us, the whole idea of a, of a drug stopping a virus going from the mother to the, to the baby was quite extraordinary. And, and as a result of implementation of that, not fast enough, it's never fast enough, and that's where we relied on activists and advocates uh, to move things faster with HHS and all these government bureaucracies, uh, but to really get, it, get the drug out there, get women tested, get the drug out there. And today, in the United States, we're looking at fewer than 100 infants infected uh, in a year. And most of those infants infected in the United States are because the mothers don't get access. They're, not, they're diagnosed too late, uh, which is another problem that we can talk about. But uh, early diagnosis, early treatment, combination drugs, we hardly see any infants born infected in the, in the United States anymore.